Hey guys, Brandon here. Uh, Sunday afternoon, decided to go for a little bit of a drive. Uh, been in some um, autopilot discussions on Twitter. Um, if you want to follow my Twitter stuff, that's at Tesla Evangelist. And uh, so uh, I kind of wanted to go out uh, this afternoon and just kind of see where we're at with uh, autopilot. Um, I have autopilot hardware 2.5, uh, enhanced autopilot. So it'll do drive on nav and um, it's constantly updating and getting better. So um, I tried it out a bunch when we first got it and I haven't done much in terms of video since then. Um, there's nothing official that's new about it, but I just wanna go out again and sort of remind myself of what it can do. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna get on the freeway and uh, do some video of it on, uh, on ramps, off ramps, and uh, an inter hopefully a yeah a freeway interchange and lane changes that kind of stuff so yeah let's see how it does somebody recently mentioned um, online the fact that the um, the diagram down here in the dash display that shows the cars in front of on the side of you when this first came out and they started incorporating the uh, uh, all the cameras around the car these were like really wobbly. You can see this one's wiggling a little bit. That's not because the car is actually wiggling in real life. See that one's wiggly. Um, and some of them would be like kind of going all over the place. Um, I think the the system display was kind of getting used to how to read um, read where the cars are and stuff like that. It's it's so much better now. There's still a little bit of wiggle on my display, but it, it really shows them uh, pretty solid right now. So that's kind of just an interesting in the background um, improvement. And I don't know if that was a one-stop improvement where, I don't know, one of the recent minor updates that we had made that better or if that's just been in real time that kind of thing gets better as it calibrates. Who knows, but as long as it's getting better. So I've just put autopilot on. I'm not on the freeway, so I can't do drive on nav or anything, uh, but it's just kind of instinctive for me. One thing I've noticed about using autopilot, even the first one, which I have AP1 on my Model S, is that when I approach an area of traffic or stopping or something like that, it's almost kind of net second nature to flip on autopilot and um, let it take care of the um, you know low speed stop and go stuff. Now, for example, here when the light's going, I'm actually having I'm actually making it accelerate because um, sometimes it waits a little bit too long it's not quite aggressive enough which I'm sure they'll change in the future but so minor things like that but all that to say like it's just it's just instinctive to let it um, to let it use those because it does a it does a better job than I do all right so I've yeah we're getting on the ramp I've in plotted to a plotted course to a random place uh, that involves an interchange as well as um, a freeway interchange as well as an exit and all that kind of stuff so okay so I've got the uh, we're on the on-ramp right now the the speed it doesn't adjust very well to the speed so I'm gonna just set it myself um, it sets it to an appropriate speed for the on-ramp but it needs to adjust the max speed faster, in my opinion, to uh, to freeway speed. Um, and you can do that, you can force it to by holding the stock. Okay, so we're in, this lane is gonna exit, so it needs to tell me to get over, which I'm sure it will. Light force. It becomes an exit eventually, not, not so let's see what it... Oh, I don't have nav on either, but that's why. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right. Took me long enough. Sorry, right, I'm watching the road, not so much the indicators. I've done that more than once, but I forgot to click... Oh, well, you can't see it, but... Not only do you have to put on autopilot, you have to make sure it's on uh, navigate on autopilot. So, uh, all right, here we go. We are going to be... Going to be approaching an interchange right there um, in a little bit so yeah we'll just see how that goes 
to Michigan 6 West Twin So just to review what Autopilot is, it's an advanced driver uh, assistance program, meaning that the driver is still in control, but the Autopilot basically uh, takes care of monotonous tasks, and it does so while incorporating um, situational awareness from multiple cameras all around the car simultaneously, as opposed to my head, which uses two cameras, both looking in the same direction, um, with a rotating device, my neck, which is prone to strain. So anyway, that's what it's in effect doing. Okay, here we are at a... Whoops, why is it taking this? Oh yeah, we are taking this. <laughs> so, there again, this is an advantage of um, Drive on Nav, where, uh, especially for freeway interchanges, it makes sure you're in the right, in the correct lane and stuff, um, which is super handy. So it really allows you to focus on the road and your surroundings uh, a lot more than just having to um, deal with everything all at once. Because you can't deal with everything all at once. You have to, you have to prioritize. Um, so humans exclude certain areas while they're focusing on other areas. The system can focus on many things all at once. You might hear some whistling. That's because it's pretty windy out. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that was a pretty easy interchange, which um, that kind of leads us to another point where uh, autopilot is not uh, perfected yet. It's quite useful, um, but it's not perfected. In ideal situations, so for example, if there were well-designed roads with no other cars around, this system could drive itself onto the freeway, uh, switch itself to another freeway, get off the freeway, and come to a complete stop all by itself, easily with no um, human intervention. Now, how reliable that is with additional cars, so it can do it with, with traffic like this, where it's not too bad, but um, multiple factors make that increasingly more complicated. For example, add in some weather, some rain, some lines that aren't very well that aren't very good, uh, construction zones, uh, some idiot driver that's next to you, uh, denser traffic, um, abrupt uh, acceleration or deceleration that's needed. Um, that, okay, I gotta make this a little bit farther here, hold on. Gotta change our destination. So, the system can't handle that yet, uh, but it will in the future. So what's happening right now is the reliability of the system uh, uh, for each more complicated factor is getting better and better and better until finally the system is able to navigate um, those environments without the human supervising it. So either way it's still useful just as a human supervised uh, a driver assistance program um, but for example right now this is really showcasing what it can do in ideal situations and a lot of driving is done in ideal situations right um, especially interstate driving and those situations where you can just drone on your mind can drift that's where autopilot really shines because it's always aware it never daydreams it never falls asleep and um, so it's those monotonous areas of ideal situations or ideal conditions that autopilot is uh, really good at. All right, so that was the exit that we were previously gonna take, but I changed it because I need a little more time because I was talking too much. So, um, yeah, how, much, how many miles do we have? Uh, 4.2 miles. All right. All right, I'll check back in when we are a little bit closer to this um, to this exit that we're gonna take. I was gonna showcase. Uh, whoopsies. I was gonna showcase um, lane shifting and, and that kind of thing, but there's not really enough cars to do that right now. So I can feel the car uh, ping ponging very gently. I guess you wouldn't call it ping-ponging if it's gentle, but 
normally it's not quite like that and I think the reason is that it's quite windy and so the, the wind is kind of blowing the car a little bit and then the system is compensating. Here I've just noticed the system did where this there was an on-ramp and then uh, the lane was a little bit wider than normal and the system did kind of straddle those two, not, not two different areas, but um, instead of staying in this lane and letting the other one join it, it kind of went to the went to the average of the two. So not a big deal, not disruptive, um, but that's something it will learn as time goes on. Uh, it's also quite good at identifying a car that's going to be merging on, on, on the right side, and actually slowing for that vehicle. It actually slows a little bit too much, but it's, it's really interesting that it can detect them. Uh, I gotta speed up here because I'm getting tailed. So I'm moving into the wrong lane on purpose, and I'm gonna see, yeah, so it's saying confirm lane change to follow route, so I'll confirm that move. Uh, there's no red lines here, so it's telling me it's all clear, which it is. And we should be coming up to our exit pretty soon. There's the exit right there. Took it all by itself. Cars are slowing up there. Now it should slow down and stop. At some point it switches to regular autopilot. Take goes off drive on nav. Oh, it's even keeping me left at the fork, that's interesting. In 500 feet, they are left on Avenue Okay, now it switches to regular autopilot. And it's stopping slightly abruptly, but not too bad. All right, there we go. All right, so that was pretty good. Um, once I actually got drive on nav uh, engaged, I didn't have any problems getting onto the freeway, uh, navigating the freeway, getting into the right lane for freeway interchange getting into the right lane for exiting the freeway and then actually exiting the freeway and coming to a stop. So it works really well. Again, that was fairly ideal conditions, meaning uh, pretty well designed interchanges, um, good markings, and um, the traffic wasn't too intense. Um, <clears throat> but it works. So the situations where it doesn't work, um, where things are just a little bit more complex, those are what will be, as Musk calls it, the march of nines, where see it works in 90% of situations, and then it needs to be 99%, and then it needs to be 99.9%, .9%, and then 99.99999, until it's so reliable that um, you really should have it driving and not the human uh, for nearly all situations. So, yep, yeah, pretty good. So looking forward to the next updates that we'll be getting this year. So the next feature that's coming is uh, Enhanced Summon or Summon Plus or something like that where um, instead of just going forward, backward uh, to summon or into your garage, the um, you can stand within 100 feet of 150 feet of your car, and uh, once you connect with your app, you can hold down the button in the app, and your car will um, get out of its parking lot, uh, navigate through a. Oh, it'll get out of its parking spot, and then it will navigate through a parking lot and come to wherever you are with your phone um, on private property, so in private parking lots, and as well as residences too, if you are if you have a driveway that big. <laughs> so that's going to be super fun, and then also, what else are we supposed to, oh, um, we're supposed to be getting uh, the 
drive on nav where we, you don't have to um, approve each lane change. So, and that will be the tipping point for me that I consider like, okay, we're officially starting to get to full self driving here where it will start to change lanes and stuff by itself without needing confirmation from a human. Human still needs still needs oversight, but um, that's just on that's just a whole nother level. And then after that, oh, it's supposed to start recognizing um, street lights and stop signs, which word is it's getting better on that. That's, that's, what, that's what Musk has been saying. Um, and then uh, yeah, and then I think probably drive on navigation will start um, be they'll start. It'll, it'll be uh, approved for use in like um, residential and urban city type situations. So that's kind of the roadmap of where it's going. And um, yeah, pretty exciting. Also exciting to see what uh, when the first hardware three vehicles come out, uh, what's going on with those ones, how that's going to improve the system and stuff. So can't wait to see how that. Uh, know takes it up another level uh, because that system will I mean it works on hardware 2.5 but um, there's a lot of data for those there's three graphics cards I think there's two Nvidia and one um, one uh, shoot, who was the other one I can't remember anyway but the next one is gonna be solely Tesla or at least the autopilot one dedicated autopilot one one will be all uh, Tesla and that's going to allow all the cameras to be full resolution full frame weight full frame rates um, which just brings it to another level of reliability so uh, the current ones are a little bit handicapped with this hardware where they have to cut the frame rate down and they have to uh, do a lot of software manipulation to the images so that the data rate isn't so high because uh, they have they have to conserve the computational reserve, but um, it will still work, especially if there's a human supervising. But for a human asleep, you're going to want the hardware three, which is why they're retrofitting that to any full self-driving subscribers um, like myself. By the way, yeah, I did this that this weekend. The price was now two grand um, instead of I. When I bought the car, I could have added full self-driving for 3000 After purchase, it was going to be 4000 but they reduced the prices just across the board on a ton of things, including full self-driving. So uh, I added that for two grand um, this year. So at some point, we will be getting hardware 3 in this Model X, and that's going to be super exciting as uh, that comes and as autopilot just improves and improves so anyway this was a long video hope you enjoyed it um, yeah it's a great system if you are debating about getting autopilot it's actually quite uh, relatively affordable for what you get uh, basic auto steer and stuff is like three grand right now um, so that is very useful it's up to you whether it's use you um, whether it's worth three grand but the entire package is five grand which is actually pretty insane considering what hardware, uh, computer hardware, as well as what future software you're gonna be getting. So, all right, I'm gonna sign off here and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.